The last time we were looking at um, variational characterization of eigenvalues, by which we mean that we are looking at uh, characterizing eigenvalues as solutions to an optimization problem. And this is specific to Hermitian matrices and which have the property that the eigenvalues are all real. And so you can consider ordered eigenvalues. So you can order them in increasing order. And that is a set of eigenvalues. We saw this uh, Rayleigh Ritz theorem. It said that if you have a Hermitian symmetric matrix with ordered eigenvalues lambda 1 to lambda n, then x Hermitian ax is lower bounded by lambda 1 times x Hermitian x and upper bounded by lambda n times x Hermitian x for any x belonging to c to the n. So the length x Hermitian x is the length Euclidean length squared of x. Uh, it gets scaled when you multiply, if I, when, I, when you do x Hermitian ax, and the smallest possible scaling is lambda 1, and the largest possible scaling is lambda n. So that gives you um, bounds on how large or small x Hermitian ax can become compared to x Hermitian x. And further, lambda max or lambda n is equal to the largest value that x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x can take over all x not equal to zero, which is the same as maximizing over vectors lying on the unit n-dimensional complex ball uh, given by x Hermitian x equals one of x Hermitian ax. And similarly, lambda one, which is the smallest eigenvalue, is the minimum of x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x for all x not equal to zero or over all x not equal to zero, and is the same as minimizing x emission ax over the unit n-dimensional complex, uh, over the n-dimensional complex unit sphere. And a corollary to this was that if A is a Hermitian matrix, then if we define alpha to be x emission ax over x emission x for any non-zero x in C to the n, then there is at least one eigenvalue of A in the interval minus infinity and alpha, and at least one eigenvalue in the interval alpha to infinity. Okay. Now, today we will continue this discussion and talk about further results on such variational characterizations of eigenvalues. So, this uh, really rich sir? theorem. Is there a question? Uh, yes, sir. Um... Sir, so what is the use of this corollary? Uh, so that it allows you to identify intervals in which eigenvalues of A must lie. OK, so we'll see some, some examples of further results we can derive based on these uh, results. In fact, this corollary is an easy consequence of um, the Rayleigh-Ritz theorem. So sometimes we may not explicitly refer to the Rayleigh-Ritz theorem, uh, refer to this corollary and actually go back to the Rayleigh-Ritz theorem to show it, but sometime, but in fact, it's a consequence of this corollary as well. But uh, we'll see some examples of uh, where this will be useful. But for now, just note that if you, if you know any x, so for example, I could take x equal to E1. If I take x equal to E1, x Hermitian AX will be A11, the one comma one element of the matrix A. Of course, x Hermitian X is equal to one for that vector. So what I know then is that there is at least one eigenvalue of A, which is between minus infinity and A11, and at least one eigenvalue in the interval A11 to infinity. And this applies to any diagonal entry. If I take, take x equal to EK, I'll take, get different diagonal entries of the matrix A. So um, what this is saying is that there's at least one eigenvalue that is less than or equal to any one of the diagonal entries of A, and at least one eigenvalue which is greater than or equal to any of the diagonal entries of A, and so on. So in, in fact, um, it's often useful to approximately locate these eigenvalues. You may not want to get the exact eigenvalue simply because Computing the exact eigenvalues is a computationally expensive task, especially for very large dimensional matrices. And so finding bounds or intervals in which these eigenvalues are, may lie is actually very useful. Thank you, sir. Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, so we'll continue. Now the, this this result tells us something about um, lambda max and lambda min. Okay, and the natural question is what about the other eigenvalues? Can we have a variational characterization of the other eigenvalues? So now suppose um, uh, suppose Any Hermitian symmetric matrix is diagonal, unitarily diagonalizable. So suppose A can be written as U lambda U Hermitian, where U is unitary, and we'll denote its columns as U1 through UN. Yeah. Yeah. Unitary. Yeah. And lambda is a diagonal matrix containing the eigenvalues of the matrix A. Now, suppose uh, we consider um, only the vectors x that are orthogonal to u1. So if we consider um, only those x in c to the n that are to u1 the first column of u which has the corresponding eigenvalue lambda 1 this is the smallest eigenvalue okay then we have the following so if i consider x hermitian yeah, ax This is equal to, I'll expand it out. So A is U lambda U Hermitian. So I can write this as summation I equal to one to N lambda I times the entry of U Hermitian X, the ith entry, ith entry square, which in turn, is equal to the ith entry of u Hermitian x is simply ui Hermitian times x because u has columns u1 to un and so i can write that as sigma i equal to 1 to n lambda i times ui Hermitian x square now u1 Hermitian x is equal to zero because i'm assuming that i'm considering only an x which is orthogonal to u1 and so i can further drop the i equal to 1 term and write this as i equal to 2 to n lambda i u i Hermitian x square. Now, um, the, this is a non-negative number. So this is a non-negative combination of lambda 1 to lambda n and lambda 2 is the smallest number. So if I replace all these eigenvalues by lambda 2, I'm only making this, this summation here smaller. So then I get, so it's a non-negative combination of lambda 2 to lambda n. So I have x Hermitian ax is greater than or equal to lambda 2 times sigma i equal to 2 to n u i Hermitian x square and uh, this again uh, see u is a unitary matrix and so this is actually equal to lambda 2 times sigma i equal to 1 to n I'm I mean, I'm reinserting that zero, which was U1 Hermitian X, and I'll write it as U Hermitian X, ith component square. And this is just nothing but um, X Hermitian U, U Hermitian X, and U is a unitary matrix. So this is equal to lambda two times X Hermitian X. Okay, so, um, so basically, uh, so we have now that X Hermitian AX is at least or it's greater than or equal to lambda 2 times X Hermitian X. 
for any x that is orthogonal to u1. Now we can achieve equality in this by choosing uh, x equal to u2. Okay, so that means that I mean, you can see that from here itself, if x equal to u2, then only the u2 term will survive and this will become equal to lambda 2 times u2 Hermitian x um, square. All the other terms will be equal to 0 because these are orthonormal eigenvectors. And so then uh, this will become equal to uh, lambda 2 times x Hermitian x. So or u, u2 Hermitian u2, which is equal to 1. So u2 Hermitian a u2 is equal to lambda 2. OK, so that means that the minimum over all non-zero x that are perpendicular to u1 of x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x which is actually equal to instead of considering all x here, I can as well minimize over all x such that x Hermitian x equals one and retaining this in a, this constraint x is perpendicular to u one. X Hermitian a x x Hermitian x equals one, so I don't have to divide by that and this is equal to lambda two. So this shows how I can characterize other eigenvalues in terms of uh, as a solution to an optimization problem. So if I want lambda 2, I need to insert a constraint. X should be perpendicular to u1. By making the same exact argument and extending it, we have that the min over x not equal to 0, x perpendicular to u1, u2 up to uk minus 1, x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x, which is equal to the min over x Hermitian x equals 1, x perpendicular to u1, up to uk minus 1 x Hermitian ax is equal to lambda k. And this is true for k equal to 2, 3, etc. It's also true for k equals 1, except that this inequality, this constraint here, x perpendicular to u1 drops off when I consider k equal to 1. So we'll follow that convention going forward. And so we may even write k equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. But when I say x is perpendicular to u1 through uk minus 1, and if I said k equals 1, it's kind of saying x is perpendicular to u0, but there is no such vector like u0. So what that means is that this constraint drops off. So this is one way to write all the eigenvalues of the matrix A in terms of, um, an, in, in terms of an optimization problem. And similarly, Um, so if you remember, we started by looking at, I mean, the, in this, we have a lambda max also, which is the max, the solution to a maximization problem. So starting from lambda n, if you had considered all x that are perpendicular to u n, and then uh, proceeded with exactly these arguments, what you can show is that this is also equivalent to saying that the max over x not equal to 0, x perpendicular to un, un minus 1, all the way down to un minus k plus 1, x Hermitian ax over x Hermitian x is equal to the max over x Hermitian x equals 1, x perpendicular to un, un minus 1 all the way up to 
u n minus k plus 1 x Hermitian a x is equal to lambda k. So, uh, sorry, this is lambda. I've gone up to n minus k plus 1. So, this is lambda n minus k. And again, k equal to 1, 2, etc. Because when I put k equal to 1, I get lambda n minus 1. So, this is another way to characterize the uh, eigenvalues of A as a solution to a maximization optimization problem. So, so we've seen these uh, variational characterizations of all the eigenvalues of the matrix A. Now, this is nice, but it has a small drawback, which is that in order to set up the optimization problem, in this case, for example, you need to know what u1, u2 up to uk minus 1 are. Or in this case, you need to know what un, un minus 1 up to un minus k plus 1 are. We can overcome this dependence on the knowledge of these eigenvalues as follows. So let um, w be an arbitrary vector okay, in c to the n. Okay, then the maximum, which we'll write as soup for uh, for no particular reason. So for the purposes of this course, um, soup and max are the same. The textbook writes soup, so I'm also writing soup here. Um, X Hermitian X equal to one and X perpendicular to this vector w that is given to us of x Hermitian a x is equal to the soup of x Hermitian x equal to 1 x perpendicular to w of x Hermitian I'll substitute x a is equal to u lambda u Hermitian So this is what I get. And this is again equal to just expanding this in terms of a summation. Of summation I equal to one to n lambda i times u Hermitian x ith component square. Now what I'll do is um, I will, um, I'll call this vector z, okay, u Hermitian x equals z or uh, x equal to u z. Okay, so multiply by u Hermitian, u Hermitian x equals z. Um, so then I get that this quantity here is equal to the soup. So x Hermitian x equals 1 is the same as saying uh, z Hermitian u Hermitian u z equals 1, but u Hermitian u is the identity matrix. So I can write the constraint as z Hermitian z equals 1. And x is uz, so uz is perpendicular to w of the summation i equal to 1 to n lambda i times mod z i square, which is equal to, now if uz is perpendicular to w, That means that mathematically this is the same as saying um, z Hermitian u Hermitian w equals zero, which is the same as saying z is perpendicular to u Hermitian w. Actually, these are both all equivalent statements. So 
instead of constraining uz to be perpendicular to w, I can say that z should be perpendicular to u Hermitian w. So I'll write this as the soup. And then I'm writing that this is greater than or equal to the supremum over the summation i equal to 1 to n lambda i mod z i squared subject to z Hermitian z equals 1 z perpendicular to u Hermitian w and z1 equals z2 equals etc up to z n minus 2 equals 0. Are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Only just now, sir. OK, so, so I've not gone much further ahead. All I did was I said that this quantity is greater than or equal to the same quantity, but with the extra constraint Z1 equals Z2 equals Zn minus 2 equals 0. Able to hear me now. So your voice starts breaking up uh, every now and then. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I understand, but unfortunately, I don't have a very good internet connection right now. So you have to tell me if. You are able to follow the argument I'm making. I'm making one small argument here. That this quantity that we came up to is greater than or equal to this quantity here, which is the same as this, except that there is this additional constraint that Z1 through Zn minus 2 equals 0. Are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So all I've done is to add a few extra constraints. OK, making or forcing some of the ZIs to zero can only decrease the value of this cost function. Whatever supremum you could achieve here, you may or may not be able to achieve it here because you have this additional constraint that Z1, Z2, et cetera, up to Zn minus 2 must be equal to zero. So the cost function value will decrease. OK, and so this is the same as supremum. So since Z1 to Zn minus 2 equals 0 and Z Hermitian Z equals 1, I can write that as Zn minus 1 square plus Zn squared equals 1 and the vector Z is perpendicular to U Hermitian W of since the first n minus 2 Z i's are equal to zero. I can drop those terms here and write the cost function as lambda n minus one times Z n minus one square plus lambda n times Z n square. OK. And of course, between these two, this quantity is the smaller quantity and we are taking essentially a convex combination of these two terms because z n minus one squared plus z n squared equals one and so when you take a convex combination of two numbers lambda n minus one and lambda n then whatever con this is is going to be some number between lambda n minus one and lambda n and so this is greater than or equal to lambda n minus one OK. OK, so what this says is that. What we have just shown is that. Um, So, x Hermitian x equals 1 
x perpendicular to w x is greater than or equal to lambda n minus 1 and this is true for every w i think now now it should be okay so i'll just very quickly repeat what i was saying so our starting point was we were looking at the largest value or the supremum of x hamitian ax over all x such that x hamitian x equals 1 and x is perpendicular to w we went through a few simplifying steps and we came up to a point where we showed that this is exactly equal to the supremum of the summation i equal to 1 to n lambda i times mod z i squared subject to z hamitian z equals 1 and z is perpendicular to u hamitian w and then we did something which i consider quite brilliant which is to say that this is greater than or equal to the supremum of the same quantity summation i equal to 1 to n lambda i times mod z i squared subject to z hamitian z equals 1 z perpendicular to u hamitian w but we threw in one extra constraint that z1 z2 up to zn minus 2 are all equal to 0 okay that's because throwing in an extra constraint can only reduce the value of the cost function because not all points that are feasible here are going to be feasible here here you are only allowed to search you not only have to respect these two constraints that z hamitian z equals 1 and z is perpendicular to u hamitian w you also have to res respect another additional constraint that z1 z2 up to zn minus 2 equals 0 so this cost function cannot be as uh, may not be as large it can never be larger than this cost function and so this is greater than or equal to this and this now that i've set z1 to zn minus 2 equals 0 i can drop the first n minus 2 terms in this summation and write this as the supremum over and similarly in this constraint this is nothing but z1 square plus z2 square plus etc up to zn squared equals 1 and the first n minus 2 terms are equal to 0 so i can replace the constraint with this constraint here zn minus 1 squared plus zn squared equals 1 and the cost function becomes lambda n minus 1 zn minus 1 square plus lambda n zn square now this is these two things in these two quantities add up to 1 so they are numbers between 0 and 1 they are non negative numbers and so uh, th this is just a convex combination of lambda n minus 1 and lambda n and lambda n minus 1 is smaller than lambda n so the uh, uh, the the smallest this can ever be is just lambda n minus 1 okay so in effect what we ended up showing is that the supremum of x hamitian ax subject to x being perpendicular to w and x hamitian x equals 1 is at least equal to lambda n minus 1 and this is true for any arbitrary w which is in c to the n okay so since it's true for any w even if we throw in an infimum even if we take the minimum of the left hand side that will still satisfy this inequality in other words i can fix my w to be anything i'll fix it to be the one that achieves the minimum over all w in c to the n of the supremum x hamitian ax subject to x hamitian x equals 1 x perpendicular to w this is equal to lambda n minus 1 oh, sorry is greater than or equal to lambda n minus 1 okay so but then from what we saw above this quantity will achieve equality if i set w equals un Sir? Yes. So in the infimum statement, why is there not equality? 
So that's what I'm coming to next. So that's the that's the point. I can achieve equality here. The, so what showed is that the infimum is at least equal to lambda n minus one. But then when I said w equals u one, I will I will get lambda n minus one. That's what we showed earlier. And so the conclusion is that the infimum over all w in C to the n of the supremum um, over x Hermitian x equals 1, x perpendicular to w, x Hermitian ax is equal to lambda n minus 1. Okay, so in other words, in this particular optimization problem, this is a different optimization problem that characterizes lambda n minus 1. And in this optimization problem, instead of saying I'll take the supremum over x perpendicular to un, I'm doing an, a supremum over an arbitrary w and then taking an infimum over all such possible w's. And so I don't need, I mean, at least technically, the way this optimization problem is set up, I don't need to know what un is in order to solve the problem. It's another matter that the solution to this optimization problem occurs at w equal to un. But in the problem setup itself, I don't have a requirement that I need to know what, you, uh, what un is.